rough and rugged. It is what it is. I mean, it's week one of NFL, week two of college football. Welcome to Big Ben and K-Win on nofilter.net and YouTube. We broadcast live each week. If you're watching it, drop your comments below. If you're watching us later, drop your comments below. More of an audio podcast person? Rate and review us. Download, listen, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. I'm K-Win. He's Big Ben, and he wants to start with college football today? Mm, mm, no. no? We've, we've already got a taste of, of college football. We, we've already got a taste. A taste. I, I'm i more, I'm salivating for the NFL. Ooh, okay. Game one tonight. Great game, by the way. Lamar versus Patrick Mahomes. Defending. Rematch. Yep. It's going to be a measure of can the Chiefs re- three-peat? How good are some of the pieces that they brought in? We're not going to see Malcolm Brown, but we'll see Xavier Worthy. Uh, kind of the new look is Pacheco as good as everyone thinks he is. On the other side, Derrick Henry with the Ravens. First time he's done a jersey, I believe, other than the Titans his entire career. Lamar Jackson, the paradox that my, Lamar Jackson is. And that's just the precursor to the upcoming games on Sunday and Monday. I'm excited for the NFL. And we have Friday night Packers in Philly in Brazil. Like, wow. first time an NFL game ever will be played in South America. I can't wait. Nothing can go wrong there. Nothing. It's going to go off. So here, yeah. I'm going to kick you off with some NFL coverage. Okay. Caleb Williams, the NFL first round overall pick for the Chicago Bears, plays on Sunday against the Titans. Love him or hate him, we'll all be watching him. He looked good in the preseason. He looked poised. He made plays. But now it's the regular season. No more man-to-man defenses. No more second, third, four-stream defenses. There's going to be some disguises. There's going to be some new looks. Will the Bears make the playoffs in year one of Caleb Williams' career? Well, you first of all, you have to look at the, the division they play in. That's not, it's not an easy division. I mean, you look at Green Bay, they're good. They made, they snuck into the playoffs last year. They'll you be got, better this year. They'll be better. Detroit is, I mean, some are saying top five team in the NFL. So you got two teams ahead of you right there that were previous playoff teams, one that went to the NFC Championship. The Vikings are going to have it down here. So effectively, you're paying four games against two previous playoff teams that are darn good. So what do you have to do? You have to go out and get help for David Moore, which they did, Roman Duse and Keenan Allen coming in. And then their defense is probably a top 10 defense. It's it's going to come down to Caleb, to be honest. Like you, you look at that team, you go, all right, it's got all the pieces. The quarterback makes the, the, you know, the train go or whatever you want to say. Is, are they going to make the playoffs if you ask me today? No. No. They're 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 there. They're probably uh They're in the hunt all year and it's yeah. confuse fans because they think the Bears have a shot. Caleb will have his ups and downs, but they're not gonna make the playoffs. Like I did the math in my head while you were eloquently speaking. You got four division winners. Mm-hmm. Let's start out in the West. I mean, more than likely it's probably the Rams or Niners, so one of them gets the division, one of them gets the wild card. You go to the South, there's probably only one team. I'll I'll take the Falcons to to win the division. And then you move to the East, probably the Eagles and the Cowboys. And then you move into the North, it's probably the Lions and the Packers. So that's four division winners, three wild cards. Seattle's going to be pretty good. The Saints may sneak in. Bears don't make playoffs. Here's what I'll say about the Bears. If I am a Bears fan, I am ecstatic about what they did in the offseason. Like, there's there's no – of any fan base in the NFL, there's no fan base that should be more excited about the upcoming season. You have the number one draft pick of quarterback. You got your choice. You got your, your guy. And you brought in a lot of great pieces. Um, you know, they're looking for a new stadium, I think, in, in Chicago. Um, they're they need the playoffs more than any more than any fan base. But they're so loyal. The last time the Bears made the playoffs was 2020 with Mitch Trubisky 
and uh, Nick Foles, Allen Robinson, Cole Komet was still there. But your point is right. They've got better talent. They've got a better system. And moving forward, they've got a better shot. I like what they're doing. I think Caleb will show flashes of brilliance. You know, Mm -hmm. they compare him to Mahomes. Will he turn to Mahomes? I don't know. But it'll show some playmaking skills. What I really want to see is, like, what he's going to do, like, when he gets inside pressure. Like, Mm -hmm. when the pocket collapses, is he just going to run? Is he going to be patient? Is he going to use his screens? How is he going to read defenses? Is he going to be able to make plays in a split second? I think he'll make a lot of plays. I think he'll have a lot of interceptions. His rookie year will be like Peyton Manning's. He'll throw mm-hmm. a lot of touchdowns. He'll have a lot of intercepts, interceptions. Throw a lot of touchdowns. Throw a lot of interceptions. If you think about Keenan Allen, what he brought to the Chargers, he, like, third and four guy, slant, boom, get his body Uh, he's going to be vital to, I think, the success of Caleb Williams early on. He's a veteran. He's probably going to be open. Some of those, you know, even David Moore is, I think, in his fifth year now. So he's there. DJ, excuse me. No, DJ, you're right. So they're going to be able to coach Caleb up a little more than, say, most, right? If you come in with no-name wide receivers that don't know the NFL, like, he's going to benefit from having some veteran wide receivers to be able to throw through. I say this about your pocket collapsing. Get to the ground. Yeah. Get to the ground. Like, that's the best thing you can pr- do probably early on. Or the throw ball out of bounds. Yeah. And we forget about the run game. DeAndre Swift came in. Uh, Khalil Herbert's a serviceable back. So, he'll have some opportunities. Just hand the ball off. Get him acclimated. Let him get used to the speed of the game, especially in the regular season. Yeah, fringe playoff team. But, man, I I'm excited. A lot that. will be on Matt Everflus or Fleece. He's in his third year. And depending on Caleb's growth and the Bears' growth will probably depend on his future. Right? Yeah. They compare him the most to Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes sat his first year, and then Andy Reid was his play calling coach. Not to take anything away from what Mahomes did, but he put him in a position to succeed right away year one. And will Caleb have the same offensive mind behind it? Ah, I don't know. I think he struggles a little bit. Yeah, you bring up a good point that sometimes the quarterback's only as good as his coordinator. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, they draw enough plays for him to be successful, and you'd think that they, they're going to do that for Caleb. I mean, Mike Leach was a wonder kid. He put up 400, you know, 4,500 yard seasons with nobodies. Yeah. So can you do that for Caleb while balancing the idea of keeping him safe? <laughs> I mean, you know, you go play at, at USC, these, these guys are twice the size. Yeah. of some of those defensive linemen that he's gone up against. We'll see. We'll see. College football? Let's get it. All right, I have a question for you. Okay. That you need to ponder. All right. Would, would you rather, you're given one, one option, one option only, okay. watch all of March Madness or watch the entirety of the college football playoff? So we're just talking about the 12-team playoff versus – March Madness. I go March Madness because day one and day two are unbelievable. From nine in the morning till nine at night, Pacific Standard Time. I'm going March Madness. Okay. Let's There's make more it upsets. There's more Cinderella stories. There's more teams. There's okay. more possibilities. Now, let me give you direct. I thought you'd say that. Now, let me give you where the teams, are, trap ne- question. <laughs> teams are nearly even. You get to watch just the Sweet 16 to Ooh. the final. Versus the college football playoff, which is 12 teams to the final. Normally, I would lean towards basketball. But since the college football playoff is so new and there's so many headlines, I got to go college football. I got to see what it's like year one. If you asked me the same question, I'd probably have the same answer. Yeah. Like that's in, in I, I looked at the viewership. Effectively, each round, the NCAA, NCAA tournament was getting about 10 million viewers. The college football playoff alone, that final alone, was getting about 13. So that's the crescendo, right? Yeah. But there's more, I think, overall fans in college football. College football did this for money, right? Yeah. But is it going to work? Do, are people going to care? Um, remains people to be will seen. care. Because if you're one of the 12 teams, those fan bases will care. <laughs> Betters will care. And if you're just a general football fan, you're going to care like I went to Santa Clara. I got no dogs in the fight any right. year, but I'm going to watch all of those playoff games. Right. 
I'm interested just due to the fact that there is like now all of a sudden there's some variability, right? When you have the top four teams, you kind of know who they are more or less. Everyone gripes, all oh, the 15 out, whoever it was. Now that we have the opportunity to watch maybe, you know, a, a sub power or a power five conference team or some of these, these lower Boise States, if you would come in and, and battle again, take on some of, of these prominent power four teams. That's the interesting storyline that I'm going to follow and that I want to watch. I'm not, you went down and watched Georgia play Clemson. Sure, that's fun, but that's kind of, you know, the writing's on the wall after the first quarter, right? Um, so I'm, I'm excited for the college football playoff. And more so, just like you said about March Madness, those first two rounds rather than, you know, the last two, right? Um, the Final Four is fun to watch, but it doesn't have that excitement and that the unknown. It doesn't have the unknown. It doesn't. But the writing is kind of on the wall for the college football playoffs. Um, I read somewhere like the top 10 teams rank, ranked right now. Nine of them are in the Big Ten or the SEC. The only team that's not is Notre Dame, which is probably going to get an at-large ranking. Not in the top 10, your USC Trojans. So they could sneak in as well. Uh, I want to bring attention to that, though. So the, everyone said, you know, the when the new um, broadcast media rights come up, that Big Ten and SEC are going to separate themselves in the pack. And just to your to what what you brought forth just now probably justifies that. Uh, what I want to know is, does that limit your maybe? Are people going to get soured on that? Same teams every year. Are we going to see any difference? No, say, because when it was four teams, it was still kind of the same. It was SEC and Big Ten dominating it. I mean, Clemson right. had their run. The Pac-12 never won a BCS title when there was four teams. I mean, Washington got close. I don't think people are going to get tired of good dominant football or great teams or a quarterback who's going to win the Heisman, who's in the final games or NFL draft picks. I don't think people will get tired of it. I see what you're saying. I mean, look at college basketball. It, the winner, it's usually what? Big East, ACC, Pac-12 didn't win college basketball Did for a while. SEC. But if you're watching replay games, right? Why, if you're watching the SEC championship again, the Big Ten championship, how interesting is that to a viewer? But the cast of players change, right? Yeah. It's new players. With the it. transfer portal, it's going to be new players and new teams from the SEC or the Big Ten. <laughs> very, 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 very true. I'm excited for it. I just hope it becomes, again, it isn't the Big Ten and SEC show. There's the value to the Big 12, ACC, gosh, what Florida State has done that opening the season. That that conference is in trouble. Yeah. Like the validity and value to those to any win that takes place in the ACC. There might be more validity and value to Old Miss beating Arkansas than there is, you know, Miami beating Florida, which just happened this past weekend. So yeah, that remains to be seen. How, how, how whoever the college football playoff committee is values wins is going to be interesting, especially in this first year, right? There's always been screams of, oh, this 10 and 0 team from the Mountain West Conference should definitely be in over an 8 and 2 team from the Big Ten. I mean, I think we're going to see three lost teams in the SEC and the Big Ten get up in over the Mountain West team that may lose one or two games. They may win, Mountain West may win the division and they still may pick a three loss SEC team. Right? But for me, I'd rather have the inverse. I'd rather watch Mountain West take on Bama. Like that's more interesting to me than watching Bama play Old Miss for the third time in the season. I agree. Well, it remains to be seen. Yeah. I like your con like you have to look at it in the vein of, of March Madness. I think people love the upsets. They yeah. love the underdog. Is the NCA and the college football playoff committee gonna allow that in the college football playoff? Yeah. I mean, there's got to be some sort of unspoken pressure to put more SEC and Big Ten teams in for revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, while the little guy has the record, I hope they get a fair shot. 
I wonder who's on that committee. Maybe we should be on it. Yeah. They, they Probably the same people who've been stealing billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, let's, let's be honest. This is all for the money. Yeah. The, uh, as much as wins loss records, it's viewership market and that those two things probably play into it more so than anything. Will people watch this game? Is what yeah. they're asking themselves. How many people will watch this? Game? Thank you. How many people will watch this game? Boise's got four hundred thousand people in it versus Gainesville yeah. that has you know one point two million. Mm, who's getting in? Yeah. Probably those Gators. All right. You want to do a little fantasy? Yeah, let's do it. I oh, got a so. dilemma, and a lot of you out there have a dilemma too. If you were drafting in the first round, somewhere between seven and nine, Jamar Chase, do you sit him or start him? I mean, it's Thursday. He hasn't signed a contract. He hasn't really practiced. What do I do, Big Ben? What should <laughs> you do? Would you smart? Would you start Jamar Chase against the Patriots? Go trade for T. Higgins. It's probably the best thing you can do, to be honest, at this point. I mean, it seems as though. Do you consider wide receivers divas? Or is that inappropriate? Like, I don't think they're divas, but they want to get paid before they go out, like of any other position. And the bar the bar had been set by Tyreek, and then it's set by another player. CD Lamb's looking for a deal. Like CeeDee Lamb got a deal. CeeDee Lamb got a deal. He's no longer out. He's in. And Jamar looked at that and goes, it's all relative in the way of stats, right? Like there's there's an arbitration process in in baseball. It's probably the same thing that goes on in the minds of every wide receiver when he sees another player signed. What do you do with Jamar? This is a test of does a guy want to play football? Is he there for the love of the game? Does he want to get out there? Yeah, but also he needs to get paid at a market value, right? Like we all have jobs too. We want to get paid a market value if Joe in accounting gets a raise. I sure as hell want a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I the Bengals need him out there. Yeah. I don't know if they need him week one against the Patriots, but week two they play the Chiefs. And the you know, situation is is Ayuk and CD Lamb were coming off of year four, so they only had one more year left on their deal. They got the extension. This is Chase's third year, so they kind of want to wait a year. But he doesn't want to wait a year because of the risk of getting injury and money and time value. So I understand what he's doing. I just don't know. Should I start him or sit him? Is he going to play this week in Big Ben? The fact that you bring up the opponent of the Patriots, he might sit. To be honest, if that's the leverage I have, right? You only know your value until you're gone. Yeah. Like he might look at it and go, listen, if you guys lose to the Patriots without me, my value just went up a lot. And there's no way you're going to week two with the Chiefs right. without, without me. me. Yes. I mean, Jamar's got, in terms of negotiation and where he's at on the table, he's got all the leverage. Yeah. And, and all the fantasy owners tweeting him or whatever you want to say, that's not going to move the needle. Right, you complaining about him not playing? He's got all the leverage. You're going against a soft opponent. You know, no, they haven't witnessed. You know, Burrow has been as good as he has because Jamar's been around. Yeah, for the most part. And we saw who the Bengals were without Burrow, but we haven't seen who they were with really without Jamar yet. No, he got and, hurt, but then Jake Browning was in at quarterback, so we haven't seen. Ryan. Yeah. Or the other. And then you got Tyler Boyd who left and went to the Titans. So they're already thin at wide receiver, right? Yeah. Um, what does Fat Joe say? Yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like if you're if you're Bengal brass, right? You're probably going to Jamar. Just wait a year. You know, we'll, we'll get it done. Yeah. We got you. But what ended up happening, in, and it's this late in the season where you know you saw some deals get restructured by those te- two teams you mentioned by the Cowboys and the 49ers to free up money to pay these guys up front back low they had some well Bengals don't have that luxury right now unless you're going around <laughs> passing the hat around the, the locker room and saying hey yo Jamar wants to pay we need you guys to pitch in a little you know like that's the only feasible thing they can do now unless they unless they restructure Right, and maybe they look at well when you've got billions and billions of dollars, like the Niners are paying 
nine all pro type players. You can restructure billions and billions yes. of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. But like, what are they gonna ask Chase Brown and Zach Moss <laughs> yeah, to restructure yeah. their deals? No. Get out of here. No. <laughs> And one thing you could probably see them doing, like a lot of these teams, they're smart, right? They see players that are coming off. Who are we, who are we going to want to retain? If we give Jamar the money in the way that he wants it, who are we going to have to sacrifice more than likely? Yeah. Or who are we at risk of losing, right? So that's probably the conversation with Jamar. Hey, Jamar, do you, do you want to get paid or do you want to play for a winner? Let's find a way where we can do both. And a lot of what Jamar may be looking at is, I hear you, but without me... <laughs> We're not a winner, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the point he's probably. And then here's what the Bengals probably didn't see. One, they didn't see this happening. Right. Two, they didn't see the, holy cow, we got rid of Tyler Boyd. That was our fallback. If you go into the Patriots game with Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins, okay. Yeah, you're okay. If you go into the game with T. Higgins and some unknowns, Burrow might be on his back a lot more than you think. Yeah, and there's no Joe Mixon in it either. Chase Brown and Zach Moss is not Joe Mixon, right? Joe, Joe, Joe for all intent would just eat up carries. Like you could beat the Patriots with giving Joe Joe Mixon the ball 32 times. You probably can't do that with Zach Moss and Chase Brown. 15 and 15? Some, 15 and 15, maybe we'll see. I got Chase. I want him on 15 carries for Chase Brown. He's on my bed. Um Go back to your question. Are you going to start him? I'm asking yes. you. You starting him? I'm starting him because they're going to get With a deal everything done. you just said. They have a track record of waiting to the last minute. By the time this podcast airs, Chase Brown will sign, or excuse me, Jamar Chase will sign a contract. And even if he's out of shape, if he's playing the Patriots, I still think he can get two touchdowns against that horrible defense. Can it, better, I, it better be in the first half, though, because in the second half, he's going to be sucking wind. <laughs> okay. He hasn't been a part of uh, – I don't think – I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not – I'm looking at our, our fantasy football league real quick. Yeah. I have Jamar Chase. Do, do I have. Do I bench him and put Jamison Williams in for the Lions? <sighs> I'm going to wait until Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific to make okay. I think – so, DeAndre Hopkins is questionable. Yeah. Can I can I digress to DeAndre? Yeah, let's go. A similar situation, right? I, not a similar situation. Not What's going wrong to with DeAndre? I don't know. Something's always been wrong with DeAndre over the course of the past. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Something he'll put up twenty, then go away for four games. Come it's back. It's weird because yeah. in the preseason, there's no real injury report. Like coaches can keep things close to their best. Like, I don't know if it's some veterans that just don't want to go through camp or if they're really hurt. So I don't know what to say about DeAndre. Yeah, DeAndre's one of those, I'm cool. I'll be there when I want, when I need to be there. Yeah. Old veteran guy. Um, why don't we do this? I, I do want to challenge you to something. I, I realized this morning, I don't have an NFL hat anymore. Ooh. No Seahawks, no, no NFL, no NFL hat. I'm going to challenge you to a year-long points race okay. in our no-filter league. The most total points at the end of the regular season All right. has to buy someone else or the other person the hat. Actually, I take that back. I have a Bills hat. but Yeah, I know you have a hat. But it's a good I need story. a new one. I'll take the bet. Most total points. Most total points. And then you just tell me what hat you want. Yep. Or okay. vice versa. How confident? How about I'll do it? I'll do the bet only if you can't pick a Seahawks hat. Deal. Right. Deal. I can't pick a Niners hat. Deal. Okay. Deal. I, I have to vent here for one second, sure. and we'll get out of here. I was fantasy in, football. Or are we going? Yes, somewhere fantasy else? football. Uh, if we want to go somewhere else, I got a lot more. No, 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 no. <laughs> the worst position you could possibly be in a snake draft is seventh yeah absolute, i agree I the agree. absolute worst yeah. i drafted seventh this year and would you leagues. take garrett wilson because we okay. had keepers okay. and i wanted continuity because i got garrett in another league but after that here's the thing you're like i like this guy i think he'll be around 
but he's not around after 12 picks in front of you, right? You, if you're in the back end, you get some capacity. You understand who's who has needs of what, so you can draft this player and then have an understanding. You can go get players you like. Yeah. When you're drafting seventh, you can't because the players you like are probably liked by at least three other people. Yeah. <laughs> and then I feel like you got to draft the player you want around early. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I didn't do that. Cooper Cup gone. Josh Allen gone. Duncan Kate gone. Like, my team is... It's all the players, you know what I mean? I'm kidding. All the players that sit at that top line for like five, six, seven picks. Yeah. Mike Evans. You're like, do I do it? Or... Mike, Mike Evans, Devontae yeah. Smith. You're like, man, I don't want this guy, but yeah. he's probably the best value, right? I mean, you got to get the best player and you got to draft at some point to your position. Right. I was in that same position and I went, I went, Amara St. Brown, then I went Puka, and then I went Olave, and then I was just like, am I going to really draft another wide receiver the fourth round? Because he's the best player on the board, and I just couldn't do it. So I drafted yeah. Jalen Hurts, but I wanted to draft like DK right. the fourth. In uh, the plethora of wide receivers versus running backs. Yeah. I mean, you have starting running backs in the NFL, like on the waiver wire. It's... I will just say this: if I ever, if I ever have to bet the seventh again, I might opt out of the draft, auto draft, and just be like, "All right, I'm going to succumb to me not getting any of the players I like, and, and let the computer do it." That said, good luck this year. Good luck to you too. I got something. One minute left. Must start. K wins. Must start. Javante Ooh. Williams. Javante. The Broncos playing in Seattle against your Seahawks. He is a Ooh, must start. And he, listen why. It is hard to play in Seattle. The 12th man is loud. And it's even harder to play when it's your first NFL start with Bo Nix. Sean Payton is going to protect Bo. A lot of screen, a lot of dumps off, dump offs, and a lot of Javante Williams. Plus, I know Mike McDonald's at the helm. Defensive mind, great defensive mind for the Seahawks. For the Seahawks last year, Gave up, I think, the second most rushing touchdowns and yards to fantasy football running backs. I think my Hawks win the game, but I think Javante Williams eats. I watched Josh Jacobs go for 250 yards and four touchdowns <laughs> on the I, That's a pretty good one. Uh, must start T. Higgins. Yeah. Jamar doesn't play. I even would get that whoever was the third yeah, uh, like wide receiver is now the number two. Jer Jeremy too. Burton. He's on yeah. my bench. Yeah. Are you going to start Jeremy Burton? What did you say about the, what time you're going to make the decision? <laughs> At 9 o'clock Pacific time. I'll, I'll make the decision at 9, 9 o'clock Pacific. I'll be hitting more. Or I'm sorry, more passed away. Rest in paradise. Boy. I'll be checking out Ian Rappaport. And Scheffler and see who's playing and who's not. Whew. I'm excited. All right, Here's I'm a tip. You. Don't walk your dog in the morning between 9 and 9.30 because a lot of times you'll miss the injury report. I have done that before. you got to walk the dog like at 8 a.m., early 7 a.m. Wake up, Theo. Early. I agree. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get at out of Big here. Ben, at Big Ben underscore K. At Big Ben K. Win underscore on X threads instagram all your social media and then find us wherever you your uh, your podcast at big ben k win all things football every every thursday from here on out maybe yeah all things football it's been going some playoffs playoff yeah, baseball, maybe. go pods uh find us wherever you got your podcast check us out on youtube comment like subscribe great show today well done great show today. go niners can't wait for monday night I can enjoy fantasy football all day Sunday. I'm tired of this Jets stock. I know the Jets oh, okay, have great okay. defense, but okay, okay, okay. And I didn't want to hey, show my bias. Here. I didn't hey, want to show out of my here. bias in we're out of Niners. Here. We're so out I chose here. Caleb Williams. Take the Jets and take the over. Call me Boom. later. We'll talk about the Niners. <laughs> I need to bet. <laughs>